Hi guys, it's Mark Zickby, Mr. Sci-Fi. I am here at the Peterson Automotive Museum. They have an incredible exhibit on futuristic vehicles. This is the uh, transport from Prometheus behind me. And I'm gonna give you a tour of this wonderful exhibit. Meantime, of course, you know, we have a Kickstarter campaign to raise the money to shoot the rest of Forgiveness, Space Command Forgiveness. Lots of stuff happening, lots of contests. You can build spacesuits, you can name creatures, on and on. You can even build a futuristic car if you'd like to. We'll talk about that soon as well. And, um, but that's it for now. So here we go. Here's the wonderful exhibit that um, I encourage you all to go to if you're in the Los Angeles area. And this is the uh, spinner from uh, Blade Runner 2049 that the villains use. And a, a very, very cool design. And, uh, and again, you can see the Blade Runner vehicles from the other angle here. Really neat. It's, it's just a great exhibit. This is the interior of uh, Kay's spinner. And this is the cricket from AI. And again, another very cool design. And this was, of course, a project started by Stanley Kubrick and then it ended by uh, Steven Spielberg, a film by Steven Spielberg when uh, Kubrick died. So, uh, again, you can see a, a similarity in a lot of these designs of aerodynamic uh, and shiny and just, just lovely. And this is the amphibicopter from AI, a, a helicopter that can also fly as a submarine, you know, under the water. And, uh, and doesn't have a rotor. And this carried Jude Law and maybe Joe Osmond to, uh, to find the Blue Fairy. And this is the uh, car from the Sylvester Stallone Demolition Man. It's a GM concept car that was uh, reused in the movie as a car of the future. And there, again, you can see very stylish, very uh, sleek. So, and then again, you compare it with some of the designs from movies decades later, and you see certain design similarities in terms of this is the inside of Love's spinner from Blade Runner 2049. And then we can pull out and see the whole vehicle. Wow, neat. And of course, if you're going to talk iconic, the Batmobile from the TV series of the 60s is again one of the great designs of all time and then you just go from that and there's the Batmobile from the more recent movies and you can see how that looks comparatively a very very different interpretation but still cool still cool and there of course is Batman and behind him is the uh, the Joker's car from the 60s TV show and that's an actual Batman costume from the from the Michael Keaton film. Pretty cool. And here's a uh, a Bat motorcycle from Christopher Nolan's Batman films. And again, you can see very fanciful, very impressive, really cool. And though this wasn't used in any science fiction movie or TV show, it definitely belongs to these other vehicles. This is by Big Daddy Roth, and uh, he was a very inventive and wonderful car designer and builder. And this is the Orbitron. And uh, you can see the triple colored headlight in front and these wonderful, wonderful lines in the bubble top. And the fun part is also the controls, <laughs> which include a TV set, a color TV, and steering wheel, shag carpet. Now I'm, now I'm not sure how one actually gets into this car. <laughs> There's probably a trick to it, but it's, uh, it's just a great, 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 great car. I think uh, we're going to have a Space Command car contest soon where we can take my Corolla and anyone who wants to design a futuristic car and then build a body to go over my car and, uh, and change the controls and all that. As long as it's street legal, I'm, I'm cool with it. So, uh, but this wouldn't be a bad, uh, a bit of bad design to start from, would it? <laughs> the Orbitron. And this was found... Um, and it was thought lost, and then it was found in Mexico, outside a bar, kind of trashed, and in recent years it was bought and restored. And this is the wonderful shape it's in now. So this is the Roadster from Minority Report that was used in a commercial for the 2054 Lexus that's, uh, that we see in the movie. But again, it looks like it should go the other way. And then over here is this very cool sparrow from the video game Destiny, and although they've made it in CG, they built a physical one just to take on the road and exhibit. And this is a uh, 
prototype futuristic flying car from Back to the Future. This is what we were going to be getting in 2015, which is four years before the 2019 of um, Blade Runner, the original Blade Runner. So you can see that we, have, we got our flying cars. It's exactly like the ones we have now here in the, uh, the future. <laughs> and this car was a concept car that was later used in The Outer Limits, the 1960s. And again, a beautiful, beautiful design, very you know, dynamic and cool and pretty and uh, futuristic for its time. So I'll have to talk to Dave Scow and find out from the author of The Outer Limits Companion which episode this was used in. I mean, it's really amazing how many iconic vehicles you get from science fiction. You know, this design by Ron Cobb is just so terrific and it was so fun to have known him from before his career on such movies as uh, Aliens and Alien and Star Wars and Back to the Future and then have him working now in Space Command providing uh, the Shrike design to us. Just, you know, it's, it's a dream come true to be working with these incredible iconic designers. Here's the interior of the DeLorean time machine that Ron Cobb, Space Command designer Ron Cobb and uh, Andy Probert did. Really great. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So this is the transport from Prometheus. It's, a, it's one of the most beautiful movies ever made. It's a goofy film plot-wise, but if you turn off the sound, my gosh, it's gorgeous. And uh, I, which is what I often, I often do. I, I use it as video wallpaper while I'm doing other tasks. But it, this is an enormous, enormous thing. Let's see if we can find a human being. But uh, wait, there's not, there's, okay, there's some people over there. That gives you an idea of the scale of this thing. And this is, this is a fully functional vehicle. It's, uh, and it's dressed on the inside as well. Really, really neat. And uh, again, there's something so fun about science fiction design. Just it, it takes us into a, its own world. And uh, I just watched *The Wandering Earth*, which is a Chinese uh, film that's filled with these kind of designs. And this is a transport from *The Hunger Games*. The funny part is that they built these from scratch. They probably could have taken any number of armored vehicles from any number of armies around the world and come up with this. So you know, there's there's ways to skin a cat that costs less than other ways, but uh, but it's still impressive and certainly shows the totalitarian world of that movie, or those films. These are the uh, scale models of some of the cars from Fritz Lang's Metropolis. It was actually a car that was a production car that was very, very odd and futuristic at the time that they utilized for the film. And this is the uh, car from the Clockwork Orange. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Look at that. It's great. It's great. Uh, this is the... Uh, Fifth Element, another great design, very, very fun. And this, of course, is the land speeder used in uh, Star Wars A New Hope, the first Star Wars film. Terrific, amazing design. And this is Mad Max's car in Fury Road. Really great. This is just such a great exhibition. This is Nux's car from Mad Max Fury Road. Just really great. An amazing vehicle. Wonderful detail if you. Uh, look inside. I mean, it's great to see this many of, of the great science fiction cars. I mean, look at the detail on that. I mean, just and then in the back is where the is Lancer Road. It's a, it's a great movie, of course, but my gosh, so much cool stuff here. This is Tom Cruise's Lexus used in Minority Report, but the odd thing about this is this looks like it should, this should be the front. This should be the back. But in reality, it's the other way around. This is actually the front of the vehicle, but it always looked kind of ass backwards to me. So, <laughs> still a very pretty design. 2054 Lexus. And these are props used in already record, including the helmet, the weapons, the eye scanner. Very, very fun. Very fun. The helmet's very nice. And it was used, of course, for the scene where they're flying. Really a fun movie. And here's one of the maglev. Cars, Lexus Maglev cars from Minority Report. Very cool. And this is the uh, remote control miniature used in uh, Lost in Space. Isn't that wonderful? The actual one. Wow. I saw that when I was a kid and it really left its <laughs> imprint on me. And here is the exhibit on Blade Runner with the great Sid Mead designs. Look at that. That's the Spinner, one of my favorite, if not the favorite, vehicle for many science fiction films. This is a replica built by the guy who built the original ones. They built four of them, running ones, for use in the movie built on uh, 
um, VW Bug chassis and engines, and it's just it's a superb design. It isn't dated at all. And then if you look over here, this is Deckard's vehicle, his car, with a ridiculous uh, windshield wiper. That in the movie they aren't even using the windshield wiper. It's raining and he's not even using it. But it's again a cool design. And you know, there's the other side of the spinner. And again, you can see the influence it had on the Fifth Element, of course. And, there, and it just goes on and on. I mean, this is this is the uh, you know the exhibit. It's just a terrific, terrific exhibit. It's from my robot. There's the Terminator. I mean, it just keeps going. You know, so it's just really a, a wonderful, wonderful exhibit. This is the 360. So that is a taxi from Blade Runner 2049. Another great design. And uh, so that's really about it, guys, for the uh, the wonderful Peterson um, science fiction vehicles exhibit. If you are in the California or Los Angeles area, I urge you to come and see it. It's really, really spectacular. And uh, I'm so glad to be working with many of the artists who've built these vehicles, such as Ron Cobb. And uh, it's just wonderful to be able to see such brilliant designs and then to reach out to these, these uh, incredibly talented men and women and, uh, and collaborate with them. So until next time, it's Mark Sikri, Mr. Sci-Fi. You can subscribe to Mr. Sci-Fi. You can pledge at patreon.com backslash Mark Sikri. You can throw some dollars at our Kickstarter campaign, which is just about to start up. Many things coming in the future. But uh, for now, here I am in the world of science fiction and uh, happy to be here. Talk to you next time. Bye, guys.